Hi, I'm Oscar Feliu, and we'd like to tie some flies for you. They're using fresh water. Now, I've chosen the first segment of flies that's going to be about mayflies. But what I want you to pay attention to is not just the mayfly itself, which is a Hesaginia limbata. I've chosen this one so you can see how it's tied because the, the technique can be used for many styles of, of mayflies. But by tying them as a hexagenia, which is the largest one, it will show all the details in more clarity. So let me start with the tie the whole life cycle from the nymph to the, um, the dun, the emergent, and also, of course, the spinner. I'd like to wrap this hook, which is 9575 hook, 7x long a streamer hook. You have a sprout bend and a loop eye. And we'll cover the whole entire segment of the shank of a hook with thread to provide some very good base for all the material you're about to place in it. And I believe you're using material sometimes that you normally don't use for fly time. Um, sometimes you discard the schlappen or actually the material which is the bottom, the base of a feather. Well, in this case, we're going to use it. Let's pick up a little bit of that. It's like marabou. And we're going to use it to create the illusion of movement. Because the fly is tied in a rigid, in a rigid stage, not in a with moving part, or it's not in a fly tying tandem, we need to use materials that give the illusion of movement. About a half a shank of hook, we'll tie at the base. Right and spray them up a little bit so they have a good, it will show very clearly. Now I'm going to trim all the rest of these materials I don't need, like this. Then we'll get some pheasant tail. I'm going to select about three or four, fibers. And we're going to place it now. I know the, the mayfly have only three of them, but since the trial can count, we're going to put four of them. If we lose one, we still have a good fly. Four or five, I think, there and there. Same measurements again. This time, I want the whole chunk of a hook to stick out in the back. This fly is uh, developed way back in the mid-70s and have been a, a staple of mine to while you're fishing for trout or the migrating steelheads. It became a quite productive fly. The next material is um, the sparkle yarn. There's many in the market. There's one of them I'm using this time, Scholar and Lydia's sparkle yarn. And I'm going to place this in one side of a hook, to one side of a hook, just like that. Okay. We're also going to use a medium size oval tinsel. And we're going to place this in this side of The next item after this is more fastened tail.